This is the VW3A8120 parameter loader. On the Schneider website is an FAQ discussing which drives this device will work with and what firmware versions they need to be. The device comes with this paper, which was confusing for me, um, explaining how to use the device, what version the device needs to be to work with these drives. Note that ATV320 is not listed, but it does work with that. So more new information is on the website. And then these pictorial diagrams of how to operate the device, which were not immediately clear to me. I've powered my VFD and set the acceleration parameter to 29.9 so that we'd have something to watch during this process. Now we have to push and hold both buttons for about three seconds to clear any parameters that may be on the device already. Then we can pull the parameters from the device. This is going to take about 30 seconds. Once the parameters are pulled from the device, you can't do this a second time until you clear it again. This is a safety to prevent you from overwriting the parameters on the device by accident. Now I've changed the acceleration to 31.4. I'm going to tell it to store the parameters back to the device. You'll see that parameter gets set pretty quickly. The overall process is again about 30 seconds to be completed. Once the light stops blinking, you're done. You should probably stop here. What follows may void your warranty. Schneider's multi-loader tool can program this drive without applying line power. So I thought perhaps this device could as well. Reviewing the RJ45's pinout, it appears pin 7 and 8 are to supply power to remote devices. So it seemed logical that perhaps backfeeding them would power up the electronics. And that's how they were doing it with their multi-loader tool. I tapped into the two wires between the VFD and the parameter loader, pins 7 and 8, and applied 10 volts. And it worked. No smoke.